Well, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. My name is John LeBeau. I'm the chairman of the Shrewsbury Board of Selectmen, and I'd like to welcome you all to the Richard D. Carney uh, Municipal Office Building. Um, it's a great day. It's a beautiful day, uh, but it's also a great day to think about energy efficiency, renewable energy initiatives, climate change mitigation, things that are very important to all of us, all citizens of the world, actually, but particularly citizens of Massachusetts and of uh, the uh, six uh, municipalities that are here today. Um, I'm also here with uh, my fellow members of the Board of Selectmen, Moira Miller, uh, Morris DiPaolo, and Beth Cassavant. I think Jim Kane is fighting some traffic on his way here. And I did want to mention that Selectman DiPaolo, who I... Where'd you go, Mo? Oh, you're right in front of me. No wonder I couldn't find it. It was really the driving force uh, behind uh, Shrewsbury's Green Community designation. Uh, Selectman DiPaolo has spent several years reminding the board uh, of how important this initiative uh, is and uh, led us to where we are today. Um, so we're very happy to host this regional event and at this time it's, a, it's an honor for me uh, to introduce uh, one of our champions of greenness throughout the state, Secretary of Energy and Environmental Affairs, Matt Beaton. Mr. Secretary. Thank you, I mean, Selectman LeBeau, yes. It's nice to see you on our home turf, sir. Thank you for uh, the, the warm introduction, and uh, thank you all for being here with us today. It's a very exciting day uh, for all the communities, all 30 communities, and all the communities in particular for Central Mass uh, that are here to celebrate your designation as a green community. And personally, this is a super fun day for me because the Lieutenant Governor and I have been going around the state, uh, you know, she is the ultimate champion of municipalities, having been to each one, she's probably like on, on round two of all 351 at this point. But we used to go around, she loves this program, and we would go around, and we would always get sad staring at the picture, and there was a big hole in Central Mass, particularly in Shrewsbury. And we'd see the map filling up greener and greener every year, and there was still Shrewsbury and Westboro, my, uh, our old, uh, legislative um, region that uh, the Lieutenant Governor and I both had the honor of representing. And then finally the day has come when we have Shrewsbury and Westboro and uh, so many other great communities in central Massachusetts here. So personally, kudos to all my Shrewsbury friends here that uh, worked so hard and all of you and all of your communities that worked so hard to make this happen because it's not easy. It's uh, First, there's that whole educational component of educating the community as to what the heck this is all about and all the work that has to go into meeting all the different criteria and the votes that need to occur, getting everybody's head around a stretch code and what that means and the sky is falling and everything else that comes with some, some ch any change that every community, particularly in the, the wonderful form of local government that we have with town meeting here in Massachusetts, it brings out brings out the best in all of our communities. And it's not always an easy thing to do. So it takes great leadership and the leadership of all of you that are here uh, to you know, push it through and, and really make it happen. So uh, on behalf of citizen of, um, uh, of, of central Massachusetts and citizen of Shrewsbury, thank all of you for all of your work uh, to, to make this happen for your community, to make it happen for my community. And it's, uh, it's truly a great pleasure. And I'm not going to talk too much about the specific program because one thing that I learned early on as secretary is when you are introducing and speaking before the governor or the lieutenant governor, you keep your remarks generally pretty short because you never want to talk into their talking points. And I made that mistake once with the governor and he called me out on it about <laughs> ten times after that and I will never do that again. Um, <laughs> so uh, on that, you know, it is... a. Uh, Great honor and a privilege to me to have the opportunity to work uh, with, with the finest lieutenant governor in the land, but not only just as a, a great lieutenant governor, but as a great close personal friend, uh, successor of mine in the legislature, and someone that I just share so many, so many great times with and, and so many uh, great Green Communities designation uh, awards celebrations. Uh, and she is certainly no stranger to anyone in this room. That is your lieutenant governor, Karen Polito.
Well, good afternoon. Uh, it is a great day when we can end sort of the day uh, closer to home, so there's another benefit to this for both the Commissioner and the Secretary. But it's always great to be in hometown and hometown region uh, to celebrate uh, milestone moments and to acknowledge the collective work between local and state government around getting great stuff done. Uh, I'm just really uh, thrilled uh, to be here uh, calling uh, these new collection of communities, six more communities, green communities in our Commonwealth. Uh, and I think it's a real credit to you as local leaders. None of these designations are just given out. Uh, they're earned. Uh, they have to uh, come with a lot of uh, coordination locally, your, your team, your select board, your department heads really coming together to say, this is something that we want to do. What are the steps that we need to take to do it? And then actually following through with that effort. Uh, you heard the secretary talk about the adoption of a stretch code. I mean, this is not something that just is on a whim decided. There's a lot of analysis around that. Adopting a stretch code has an implication on uh, stakeholders and to really think through that and how uh, that would benefit this community and this commonwealth was something that you had to consider. Uh, before getting into this program, I do want to thank uh, Secretary Beaton uh, for his leadership on behalf of um, energy and our, our environment here in the Commonwealth. Uh, many of you know that he you know, worked uh, his way up through the legislative process and then into the executive branch to be able to bring his expertise and passion uh, on these topics. Uh, that this is important to our Commonwealth for a lot of reasons. When you think about uh, what the secretary and his team was able to do around diversifying the energy portfolio in Massachusetts uh, instead of being dependent on some energy uh, resources. Uh, we have now access to hydroelectricity that will come uh, through uh, that procurement effort that has been answered from uh, Canada through uh, Maine, thanks to our partners in Maine, into Massachusetts. Uh, the fact that we are on a second procurement for deep water wind, uh, being the first in the nation to have uh, such a, uh, an incredible response uh, to deep water wind off the shores of uh, Nantucket, uh, came under uh, Secretary Beaton's leadership and working with our colleagues in the legislature through, just think of the details associated with those kinds of procurements, diversifying the energy uh, supply in our Commonwealth. Uh, that was what we called the combo platter. Uh, we need all sorts of energy uh, supply to reduce our uh, carbon footprint and the emissions associated uh, with greenhouse gases. And that was an incredible effort and we're very proud uh, in the Commonwealth to be leading the way on those kinds of efforts. Uh, I also think it's important uh, that to, to note that we are one of the top solar states. I think I have a number in here that's pretty powerful. Uh, two gigawatts of solar energy. Only Mike Hale would really understand what that means, and Secretary Beaton, but two, two gigawatts of solar sounds like a lot. And it is because it represents about 90 thousand solar projects distributed across the 351 cities and towns of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. That's pretty significant. Uh, Shrewsbury obviously being the home of a municipal owned uh, solar that not only is a backup supply for he the community here, but for other communities in the Commonwealth. Just really progressive <laughs> and, um, efforts, very innovative, uh, but it really is uh, telling of how uh, sophisticated leadership is at the local level to be thinking and following through on these kinds of initiatives. Uh, so while we try to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, diversify our energy supply, every single one of us can do something about uh, energy savings, right? You can do that every single day in your home, in your workplace, in educating the youth of our community, your children, our children, uh, around um, energy consumption. And uh, under the Secretary's leadership, now uh, following the prior administration, eight years in a row, we are number one in the nation uh, for uh, energy savings, right? That's an amazing accomplishment. Uh, so feel really good about being a part of that. 
And this program, the Green Communities Program, is all about doing your part uh, to uh, conserve energy. And uh, it was true that when we were looking at our hometown and wondering what are we going to do as a municipal owned utility, how are we going to get uh, this community to turn green and adopt the stretch code and, and, it's, and it's come to be. And uh, now we have 240 communities that are designated green. That represents 78% of the population in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. You can applaud yourselves for that because I think that's pretty true. <laughs> Uh, this is the 12th uh, round of grants, and this round represents about $5 million of awards. Today, uh, we are acknowledging a million dollars of awards to six communities as part of that 12th round. Uh, but it really is um, amazing that we have made uh, such tremendous efforts. And I think over the past four years, we've been able to accelerate uh, this program and bring a sense of more of an urgent urgency to it. And I think over the past four years, we've made a tremendous progress in getting uh, most all of our communities adopting the program. So we've got a few more to go to get to 351, but just uh, close to close to 100 to get there. But we, we will get there. And uh, we want to thank uh, the Secretary and his whole team for their leadership. Uh, so I just want to say uh, thank you, uh, acknowledging your efforts, and uh, I also want to thank my colleagues in the legislature. Now, Hannah Kane would be here, but she is working hard to make sure that the House budget reflects your values and your, your priorities, along with your Central Mass delegation. Uh, so they're fast at work at the State House finishing out the fine points of the um, House budget. So she just wanted to extend her congratulations uh, to her hometown uh, area. Uh, both Shrewsbury and Westboro, and also to congratulate the other communities being awarded today. So it is uh, with pleasure that we are actually uh, delivering $932,961 of grants today uh, to the hometown uh, host community, Shrewsbury, uh, to Northboro, Rutland, Sturbridge, Uxbridge, and Westboro. Uh, congratulations to every one of you. Uh, to the residents of your community, uh, thank you for taking on this effort because it will make a difference. You think about your own energy bill at home and the things that you do in your household to reduce energy consumption, you know, LED lighting, making sure that uh, your windows are well uh, secured and protected to reduce drafts and uh, release of uh, uh, warmer temperatures inside to the outside, colder temperatures, for instance, in the winter. Same thing needs to happen in workplaces and municipalities. And with these funds, you'll be able to change out lighting in municipal buildings. Perhaps you'll change out street lighting. Uh, you'll look at older buildings and make them more resilient. And all of those uh, efforts will be possible with the grant funds that are made available to you today. Um, I also uh, want to acknowledge that we have another program that we are monitoring very closely, and that is the Municipal Vulnerability Program. It's called the MVP. Everyone likes that because it sounds, sounds really strong to be an MVP community, and it is because it's also addressing the effects of climate change on our communities. We know that climate change is upon us. We have witnessed that in the, uh, the variations of weather over the past four years specifically. Uh, I think the first year we had record-breaking snowstorms, the second year there was a drought, third year there was a tornado in the middle of winter, and then there was a period of time when it wouldn't stop raining, which feels like, like kind of now. <laughs> um, but the whole idea is that the, t the climate has changed, we have vulnerabilities, and we have how many that have received the assessments? Uh, more, okay, so about a, 170 communities have done these vulnerability assessments uh, through grants from a state program. And once the assessments are uh, in place, we're trying to work with the legislature in, in developing a fund that we could share uh, resources with our communities uh, to build out resilient infrastructure. Culverts, roads, bridges, seawalls if you're on the coastline, but it's another partnership program where we can help communities become 
uh, more resilient and adapt to the climate changes that are upon us. So this partnership is real. Working together, we can get so much done. And today is just another example of when state and local government work in collaboration. It benefits not only your respective residents and taxpayers, but people across this commonwealth. And as Commissioner LeBeau said, uh, it will have a global impact the more that we can do our part and be an example uh, to other communities or states around the, the world to do the same. So congratulations uh, to all of you. And I'd now like to uh, recognize uh, Commissioner Judith Judson, who's just been an amazing force behind this program, as well as assisting uh, Secretary Beaton on a number of energy um, initiatives uh, for our administration. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Judy Judson. All right, good afternoon. As the Lieutenant Governor said, I'm Judith Judson, Commissioner of the Department of Energy Resources, and it's an absolute pleasure to be here today in Central Massachusetts. And I want to thank you, Lieutenant Governor, for your leadership on municipal collaboration. This program has grown tremendously during the time of this administration. And I also want to thank the Baker Polito administration for the strong commitment to clean, affordable, resilient energy. We are on a path to clean energy, but doing so in a way that is affordable and makes sense for our Commonwealth. And I also want to thank Secretary Beaton. Uh, enjoy, absolutely enjoy working with you, being part of your team. And Secretary Beaton is a true champion of both energy and environment. He really brings those two things together to make sure that we are watching both what we're doing for energy, how much we spend on energy, but also how we protect the environment. And this program, Green Communities, is one of the ways that we are doing that. So again, I also want to thank Shrewsbury for hosting this and for Selectman LeBeau uh, for being here today and for kicking this program off and really for the work that it takes for a community, which all of you have done, to become a green community. There are five criteria. Uh, they do take effort. There's a commitment to a 20% energy reduction that needs to be made. And uh, by doing that, uh, it really does make a difference for our environment. And it also makes a difference for saving energy, for saving emissions, as well as saving money. And by saving energy, lower utility bills, uh, that's more money that can go into other priorities for the town. I also want to thank the Central Mass Regional Planning Commission and Janet Pierce for the work, really working with our regional planning authorities is one of the ways that we have been able to get so many communities, 240, uh, that regional assistance has made such a difference for the Green Communities Program. And I also want to thank our division director, Nick Connors, and our Central Mass Regional Coordinator, Kelly Brown, for the Green Communities Division. Um, if you don't know Kelly, you'll know her very well because you'll be working very closely with her as you implement the dollars from these grants. But I know you probably know her well because just getting to this point, you have worked uh, closely with her. When all 240 of our green communities reach their 20% energy reduction goal, that will be the equivalent of the amount of energy that is used by 21,000 homes and the amount of emissions reduction equivalent to taking 50,000 cars off the road each year. So it makes a huge difference and we appreciate it. So now I'd like to move on to the, you know, the exciting part where we get to provide you a certificate and your grant and that in the form of a, of a big check. I'd like to invite the Lieutenant Governor and Secretary Beaton to, to join us up here. And as I, we'll read a little bit about what each town is doing, then have uh, each town come up for a picture. Also any legislators or local officials to join us and uh, we will get things started. So we're going to start with Shrewsbury. The municipal staff, in collaboration with Shrewsbury Electric Cable Operations, thank you, uh, and the public schools, led the effort with technical assistance uh, from the Central Mass Regional Planning Commission. Shrewsbury joins its neighbors in leading the way for Massachusetts cities and towns to adopt policies 
for sustainability and resiliency and efficiency. So today with a designation grant of $183,000, uh, it will be used to fund conservation measures in the town hall as well as municipal school buildings. So congratulations and come on up. Congratulations, Shrewsbury. Our next town is a town of Northboro. Designation as a green community was a priority of the town administrator's office and board of selectmen with assistance from the Central Massachusetts Regional Planning Commission. Today, Northboro will receive a green community's designation grant of $149,000, which will fund clean energy projects at municipal buildings. Congratulations and come on forward. <laughs> Our next town is the town of Rutland. The municipal staff, in collaboration with Town Bylaw Committee and support from the Central Massachusetts Regional Planning Commission, led the efforts. Rutland has been working on reducing municipal energy usage over the past couple of years. In 2018, uh, Rutland upgraded the lighting at the public safety complex to LED lighting and installed new variable frequency drives and motors at the Department of Public Works. Today, Rutland will receive a Green Communities Designation Grant of $146,000 to continue reducing the town's energy consumption by implementing additional energy conservation measures at the municipal buildings. So come on up and congratulations. <laughs> Our next town is Sturbridge. An objective of Sturbridge since 2011 has been to qualify as a green community. Achieving green communities designation has been a joint effort between the municipal staff, the Tentasqua uh, Regional School District, and assistance from the Central Massachusetts Regional Planning Commission. Sturbridge plans to use the Green Communities Designation Grant of $144,000 towards upgrading the lighting to LED lights at multiple municipal buildings. 
as well as HVAC and weatherization improvements at the public safety complex. So congratulations to the town of Sturbridge. Yeah, may, may be hard to cash at a bank. Okay, our next town is the town of Uxbridge. Designation as a green community was a joint effort between municipal staff, the Board of Health, Uxbridge Public Schools, and the Recycling and Sustainability Committee with assistance from the Central Massachusetts Regional Planning Commission. Uxbridge is immediate goal is to use the Green Communities Grant of $159,000 to upgrade lighting to LEDs at multiple municipal buildings, as well as install variable frequency drives and motors at Taft Elementary School. So congratulations to the town of Uxbridge. And our last town of the six we are awarding today, of which I should say the six are part of 30 new communities just this year, uh, is the town of Westboro. Designation as a green community was a priority of sustainable Westboro and municipal staff with the assistance of the Central Massachusetts Regional Planning Commission. Westboro will receive a designation grant of $152,000, which will fund clean energy projects at municipal buildings and the public schools. Congratulations and come on up. So that concludes our program. We do have one more thing for each of our towns, which are road signs that can be placed around the community. We don't use them in the pictures because they're reflective, so they can be read at night if they're by the street. So uh, display them and uh, share with everyone your new designation as Green Community. So congratulations once again. We really appreciate your efforts to be a Green Community.